And a happy Tuesday. The Gonzaga women's basketball team is in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015 after a 77-66 win over Utah last night in Spokane. Yvonne Ejim scored 17 points and had 13 rebounds to win their 32nd game of the season. Third quarter underway. That's not how you want to start. Ejim pick. And the news place is going nuts. 35 straight here at the kennel. Oh, step don't back. go under. Don't step go back. under. Oh, You're reading my mind, buddy. And Egypt sprints the floor. Now you got the Trong sisters involved. Biggest lead of the game right now for Gonzaga. You're looking at it. Inside, blocked by Peely. Four on the shot clock. You got to put it up if you're Kaylin. Oh! He's got 18, 12 of those coming in the first quarter. Let's see if Kaylee Tron can answer. She sure can. 24 now for the great Alyssa Peely over her seasonal average. High low. Egypt misses. And goes right back up. But that's it. Gonzaga coach Lisa Fortier says the second quarter was the biggest factor in the Bulldogs reaching the next round. These guys, uh, they set their own goals and they want to break all these records and do all these things that people at Gonzaga haven't done before. And you just have to re keep reminding them to check them off little by little. And so, um, you know, if you want to do things we haven't done, we got to go one step at a time. And they played tough today. Um, the quarter, the second quarter, you know, Utah's a great third quarter team and, um, you know, they're a really good team anyway, but we, we, we wanted to be strong in the third quarter, but our second quarter, it turns out, was a huge decider in the game. And just, I love how tough our team played when it got rough out there, it got close. I don't know if they cut it to six or five, seven, something like that. Um, six. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just know that uh, we came down and made some free throws and we, we got the stop that we needed. We got the rebounds. Um, all of a sudden, here comes Eliza and Vani on the glass. And so I just love how we covered for each other in every area today and um, really proud of our effort. Gonzaga's win didn't come without some controversy. Utah apparently had to switch hotels over the weekend after players were harassed in Coeur d'Alene. This is Utah coach Lynn Roberts. You know, we had uh, several instances of um, some kind of racial uh, hate crimes uh, towards our program and uh, incredibly upsetting for all of us uh, and you know you think in, in our worlds uh, that you know in athletics and, and in university settings it's shocking um, you know, in a non, it, it, like there's so much diversity in, in, in a, on a college campus, and so you're just not exposed to that very often. And so when you are, it's like, uh, you know, and you, you have people say, man, I can't believe that happened. But, uh, you know, racism is real, and it happens. And it's, uh, it's awful. And so for our players, whether they are, um, you know, white, black, green, whatever, no one knew how to handle it, you know? Um, and it was really upsetting. And for our players and, and staff to not feel safe in an NCAA tournament environment, um, it's messed up. The NCAA and local officials are investigating the harassment allegations. Meanwhile, Gonzaga will move on to the uh, with the win. The uh, Zags will remain close to home Friday. They'll be at Moda Center in Portland to face top-seeded Texas at 7 o'clock. That'll be on ESPN. Haley Van Litz, USL Tigers, make that LSU Tigers, are also in the Sweet 16 and will face UCLA on Saturday morning. That'll be at 10 o'clock in Albany, New York on ABC. Well, the Mariners picked up yet another win in Cactus League Baseball Monday with a 4-1 victory over San Diego. Bryce Miller and six relievers combined on a three-hitter to earn the win. Ty France went three for three with a run and RBI, while Jorge Polanco was one for four with two runs driven in to get the offense going. Here's the pitch. 
Swung on, crushed right field. This is hammered. It's on its way, and it's off the wall. Ty France will score. JP right behind him. The throw is cut off. Julio scamper, scampers to third. Jorge Polanco, a ringing two-run double. Plants it off the wall. The Mariners, the first two runs tonight. It's 2-0 Mariners. Here's the pitch. Swung on, line drive, right field, base hit. It just scoots past Bogarts and Cronenworth. Coming to score is Canzone, and the Mariners tack on another. It's 3-1 M's. Next pitch. Swing and a line drive down the right field line. It's going to be a fair ball in toward the corner. Heading for third is Zavalli. He's going to be waved in. Up with the ball, the right fielder. The throw in is cut off. The relay to the plate, the slide, and Zavala is safe at home. Ben Williamson with a triple. Into the right field corner. The Mariners pick up an insurance run. It's now the Mariners four. And the Padres won. Ben Williamson with an extra base hit. And a run batted in. Seattle will face their facility mates one more time today before packing up and heading for Seattle for opening day Thursday night against Boston. Well, the Seattle Kraken hope some fresh faces will help stop an eight-game losing streak tonight at Climate Pledge Arena. Seattle hosts the Anaheim Ducks at 7 o'clock and have uh, called up Ryan Winterton and Logan Morrison from AHL Coachella to make the, uh, their NHL debuts. It's pretty surreal. Obviously, you, you never expect to, to get the first call. You never know when it's going to happen and um, yeah it was a pretty special day yesterday and I'm, I'm really happy to be here don't have too many expectations I'm just I'm really looking forward to it obviously it's something I'm going to remember my whole life and um, yeah it's uh, it's going to be great I expect them to play tomorrow I will make the final decision in the morning but uh, you know they both uh, yeah both both guys have earned their way here uh, with their you know with the way that they've they've played uh, down on Coachella uh, and the way they've built their year so yeah I would expect to see them uh, in the in the lineup very soon the decision to have them here today has you know that was made before last night's result um, you know so no there's they're not you know they're, they're here because they've earned their way tonight's game will be broadcast on Root Sports Northwest The prep baseball schedule got off to an early start earlier today. Manson was playing host to Tadasket. Waterville Mansfield traveling to Bridgeport. Okanagan hosting Brewster and Lake Roosevelt playing at Liberty Bell. For the larger schools, Cashmere on the road at Kiona Benton for two games. Rest are single games with West Valley at Wenatchee. Eastmont's hosting and Freda Eisenhower plays in Moses Lake. Omak hosts Quincy. Chelan visits Cascade. Of course, NCW Life Channel was out earlier today at Recreation Park for the Panthers and Rams in their Big Nine base Baseball tilt. I had the play by play. It was live streamed on our Facebook page and then will be rebroadcast coming up at 7 o'clock tonight here on the NCW Life Channel. Fast pitch softball schedule, a busy one with Cashmere at Kyona Benton for a doubleheader. Manson hosting Tadaskit, Chelan at Cascade, Quincy hosting Omak, Waterville Mansfield uh, visiting Bridgeport, Brewster taking on Okanagan, Lake Roosevelt playing at Liberty Bell. Prep Boys soccer schedule has Cascade at Chelan, Bridgeport hosting Okanagan, Pateras plays at Brewster. Liberty Bell takes on Oroville. East Valley's at Efreda. Omak hosts Quincy at 6. The 7 o'clock games have Wenatchee at West Valley. Moses Lake hosting Sunnyside. And Eastmont's on the road at Eisenhower. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a happy Tuesday.